Kevin, what are you eating for breakfast? Chipotle. It's 1 p.m. over there. It's, it's not 1 p.m. <laughs> we always start. We always start right in the middle of when you shouldn't start recording. That's I figured yes. it's usually the best way to start. <laughs> I don't even like calling it a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is this? What would you call this? If if we were the first and only people to ever record this sort of thing, what would you call it? Probably like a Zoom call. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the Safety Third Zoom call. <laughs> We've got a very special episode today. It's five people. Woo! Power was, Rangers! Was... <laughs> five. <laughs> and we have Stefan from CNC Kitchen. Yeah, great for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> so your name is Stefan. I, I hear it's like, it's always, you've had this conversation so, before. Have you had well, this? Well, yeah, you know the, exactly the thing is, so... In Germany, I would say Stefan, which sounds kind of, I don't know, German. strange uh, okay. in English. Very European. Is that German for Steven? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Stefan. What do, you, what do you want us Stefan. to call you? Uh, you can call me Hans. Hans, <laughs> Hans Stefan. <laughs> Hans. So the thing is, I, I uh, many years back, I did an internship in in uh, near Detroit, and <laughs> for Memorial Day, I was at a family, and we had I don't know a couple of beers, and the the mother of the guy who I was with, she just at some point said, "Yeah, I can't really pronounce your name. I'll just call you Hans." <laughs> so <laughs> what kind of stuck with me? We have a. Uh, um, I think we have to say something now for the audience because we said we would do it last week. We have a German caterpillar. <laughs> oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, show the I'll, box. I'll bring so, it right so, over. <laughs> somebody oh, no. in the in the safety third uh, Patreon Discord. <laughs> so we, we had a conversation about this because we Did didn't. You have, if there's any small you. kids listening to the podcast right now, <laughs> do we actually? This is no. Legitimately. Like one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me in my entire oh wait actually in my entire life. Um, I'm did gonna you cover the address. This. Did you cover the address up. Yeah. There we go. So wait, did you show it? We might have to. If you did show it, we would edit it. Why are you even showing YouTube. that side of the box? Well, to prove that it's not just like a ra like a random cardboard box. It's it's an important box, and I have to protect some of the information on here. But so inside of this box is a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, it, if this is this is all we had to do was say it. We're not going to show it because uh, uh, have you ever seen the meme of the guy <laughs> who takes uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ out of his document? So it's it's a. Are you familiar with the Bugs Life, Stefan? The the Pixar yeah, animated am. movie. I do know the caterpillar. The the German caterpillar. I think his name is yes, Heimlich. 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 Do you, do you yeah, need him so to keep the, explaining or do you understand what he's talking about? This box is a fan has made us a Bugs Life fleshlight. And it is, it is a <laughs> fleshlight of Heimlich. It is the German caterpillar and his mouth is a fleshlight. And so, uh, General Ugo has made this and sent it to us, and we're going to be unboxing this. Uh, not right now. Not right now. We just, we, all together. we had to do was say it because we didn't want to drag you into <laughs> is, is it flexible? Yes. I, I think it's probably silicone if I had to guess. You haven't seen it yet, Alan? No. No, I'm saving the unbox. I want us all to open it together. So, like, once, in once everyone's in town, I want to, like, all of us be able to take turns okay <laughs> well, looking at like, it. in like tv shows they have like cliffhangers of like stay for the commercial break so that you come back and can watch what's going to happen next here we're like trying to convince people to watch next week <laughs> with the promise of a rubber caterpillar <laughs> i am genuine but this is this is like uh, this is very this is so exciting to me because it's like this this never happens like how rare it is for someone to actually like like say they're gonna make something for you and then follow through on it and for it to be like this kind of an amazing thing like this meme thing that we've been talking about for forever how often do people ask you for like if you need help with stuff or like oh like i'll do this thing for you like does that happen frequently yeah it does it it, it, it does but i don't know i'm i'm kind of a I, I think I'm a perfectionist and yeah. I it's hard for me to delegate work because I always think that I wouldn't be be happy with the result even though probably almost anyone has is is better in a certain like field than I am but I don't know I want to keep the control so I rarely take it really quick if you don't know what Stefan does 
Stefan, Stefan, Stefan. Um, he runs a YouTube channel called CNC Kitchen, and it is one of my personally. I I love your channel. I you. I really think that YouTube was made for people like like I think us, but specifically you because you're definitely in the realm of I'm curious about something. I'm gonna look it up. I find one of your videos. And it's a really thorough explanation and exploration of a, a topic or an idea or something that like you would never spend the time to do yourself because it's not like worth it. You'll just like, you know, it's like, I don't yeah. really need to answer that question. I'm just going to, I'll just pick something. And so having someone actually go through and do these like little micro studies to figure out the actual, you know, like, you know, like, oh, is this actually a good idea? Or is this, you know, the same as 3D printing it a different way? Like, so essentially... You know, your channel CNC Kitchen for um, anybody listening or watching. If you ever have any questions about 3D printing to see, you know, cool new techniques or, you know, weird strategies, just weird experiments, that is Stefan. And I, yeah, I, I greatly the, appreciate it. The conical you doing slicing these was like so, so cool. Kind of like, you know, this, this sort of solution to like, you know, 3D printing having to have supports for parts that overhang normally. And then it's like with just sort oh, yeah. of like a little bit of tweaking the slicer settings, you can print without supports because like just the like like the fact that like you don't really need any significant hardware changes, but you can have a 3D printer just perform drastically better and differently just with like like a little bit of G code tampering. Like it's <laughs> it's like those are the sorts of channels that like like I feel like we sort of like rely on there's almost like it feels like um what the shoulders of giants type of thing or like a pyramid <laughs> scheme i don't know yeah. which one's less insulting yeah it's <laughs> it's totally fine it's the the thing is i i always try to find things a bit out of the ordinary and things that are interesting where i see or where I think this could be something really interesting and well of course i do a ton of 3d printing even even though there's a kitchen in my channel name, but, um, I, know, I like, I honestly, it stands out. It makes it really yeah. easy to like, know your, your brand. Like, but people often ask me, oh, why are you called kitchen? Why are you called CNC in the first place? You're only doing 3d printing. Mm -hmm. And then I That's always CNC. have things. Yeah. That is CNC. Every 3D printer is CNC. Yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So this is people correcting me or trying to correct me. Well, and, 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 and get it, getting back to the question. So I, I find that interesting stuff and where you see that, I don't know, we're held back by software because our mm -hmm. 3D printers are actually just printing like two dimensional slices on top of each other. Um, I don't have the skill and the time to develop things like that, but there's so many skilled other people around that, um, are often bored and maybe I can just motivate them to develop something because that already prevents it from being like patented in the first place and making it more accessible and also, mm. well, something that I can maybe use in, in the, in the future. And this is the cool thing about having, having a kind of reach because you, you can reach so many people. And even, even if under like a million, there are just one or two that know what they're doing they can make a difference in the end. And this is really, really nice. Yeah. I remember being, you know, like before I sort of had any, like, I guess I don't want to say job or purpose is not the right <laughs> word, but where it's like, you're like, before you had a reason I, to get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, we're definitely, we could take it. There's some of that energy. Um, you know, you'd find something that interests you, you know, like, I guess I don't want to say when I was a kid, when I was like, when I was a young adult, you know, I go to school or I just finished school and I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing and I like building stuff, but it's like, what do you build? You know, like, why do people build things? Right. And I, I think I've gotten a little spoiled hanging around everybody here for such a long time because we're kind of all in the same realm of like, we like same doing spectrum. things. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, when I was like in high school or early college like there was nobody that did this and so i felt kind of like i had to like i was just by myself and i like building things but i have to find something that i want to build and so i was just like well what do i like doing I was like oh i like making kind of just silly youtube videos so i'll make a little screen hdmi screen that i can like hold and plug into my camera so we can see the screen better and i'll build like a little light panel 
that has like you know colored lights and white lights and does effects and stuff like that. So you can get like flickering, and so like I liked building stuff and I've always liked building stuff, but it's sometimes hard to find a thing. Like, what do I want to do? Like, what what's this thing I want to do? And so being able to like almost like a science fiction movie, you know, you can like show this cool idea, this cool technology, and then you can inspire people. And it's it's like closer than science fiction. It's like something that actually could work directly. And then there's like going to be a handful of people out there that are now interested in this idea that you've presented to them. It's like, it's such a, it's such a, like, it's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Like, I really genuinely think it is like, I watch every single one of your videos because it's, it's so interesting to see new things. And I think if you can even get a handful of people to like lock onto one of those, it's like, oh, I think that's cool. Like, I want to spend my time building stuff, building that. Like, I don't know. It doesn't really get much better than that. I'm sometimes I'm sometimes a bit sad that I don't really have the time to do like big building projects anymore because uh, you're just constantly like trying to pump out videos and and just working on like small things and you never really find the time to to, to do something big and especially if you're doing something in front of the camera it always takes like four times yeah the, yeah f- f- four times the the amount of time that that it would otherwise take so is that true, Nigel? <laughs> what that takes forever to just like yeah you have two more videos coming out in the next 30 days right yeah you know it's funny thing about that um <laughs> i didn't what's funny about it it's funny you know <laughs> failure is a <laughs> subjective term because it's a social construct it's like it's like did you like for example if you do badly on a test did you fail or did you choose to not do well did you fail that's a you really epic? wow Nigel, how often have you said this to your parents how often have you had to explain your grades to your parents i in didn't this way? fail i chose to not do good how 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 old were you when your parents realized you would never amount to anything in life? um very early on so i had a very like struggle-free life because no one expected anything from me we got that out of the way real yeah. quick i mean uh, that's good set expectations low no i just uh i just Decided I'm only doing one video this month. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Are we, are I, said, we, I never really know what you mean when you say video. Are we talking main channel yeah, video? Yeah, the main channel talking? video. You were going to do... No, no, no. Two? I was going to post another blue. You four. Well, it's because he, he two does blue, them and two then he them all. You know? Yeah, and then or, I just decided I wanted to actually live a life this December. So I, I think I'm, like, I'm yeah. coming to a very similar conclusion, actually, for December. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really I could. appreciate you constantly uh like stopping making videos and continue making videos because it lets us like clickbait the crap out of these episodes oh <laughs> now red is done no, now red is back now red is done again i have a question does it make you feel better when like if you feel like you had a hiatus of like a couple months and then you look at me and it's way longer does it make you feel better that someone's doing worse no because you're still doing better and that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you, you have really good uh that that your evergreen content is always yeah, like, doing you're not good so. videos and you're doing better than me <laughs> yeah it actually makes me feel much worse Nigel. Oh, no. yeah i I wish that you would make more videos. Oh, no. Okay, I'll start so that your background performance wouldn't outdo my normal performance. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna kick my ass, at least totally <laughs> kick my ass. It's, it's at least fair. try. Yeah, yeah fair, it's, don't. It's unfair because like I was working on the shorts and doing other stuff, so it's not like I. I think if I literally just stopped, that would be a, a problem. Like if I didn't have any presence at all anywhere. It's like, if I'm going to get knocked out in a bar fight, hopefully it's a fight and not just a guy, like, putting on his coat and he's so muscular that his <laughs> arm coming out knocks me out, you know? <laughs> like, that's you, Nigel. I just want to say, my videos, this one I'm putting together now, is just it just takes forever. Like, I'm trying to find a way to make it more, or sorry, less miserable. <laughs> yeah, let us know when you find that out. I was going to tweet. I'm like, every time I start putting a video, to, sorry, every time I go back to making videos, I remember why I stopped. <laughs> I swear to God, at one point, all of us should just enter into a pact where we each just, we do a circle and everyone edits the video to their right. And we just, oh, all we our should. videos that come out fun. in like three days. Yeah, because no one cares. Oh, exactly. this is good enough. And they're all, oh, they're all bangers. Like, yeah, they all, at 20 a.m. Well, may, maybe I'm at a, like a different state of my, of my channel life. But for me, just having like a fixed schedule, especially with sponsors yeah. lined up in a row, mm. that helped me so much yeah. from stopping to procrastinate mm. and just getting things done and finished and not always thinking about this needs to be 100% perfect because otherwise it would take me like two or three, three, 
three times as long. I see the big difference between my blue channel and the red because, like, the blue, there's no scripting and whatever's filmed is filmed. So when you see a clip and you go, oh, that's bad. But what can you do? You can't go. It was bad. It was bad. (laughs) It's like you you just, yeah, you're like, you can't fix it. It it just, it is what it is. And you have to sit there and just edit it. Whereas for the red. It took you like six months to get that video out. The blue took, the blue I can edit pretty quick. How long does it take you, Stefan, to come out with a video beginning to end? Yeah, make is it, it feel is bad. Is it six months, mm. six years? How long two. is it? My video schedule mm. schedule is two weeks. So the first ah! week, I'm just procrastinating, <laughs> doing office stuff oh, and no. nothing. At the weekend, I realize, mm. shit, I need to finish a video. <laughs> until next week, the video needs to be at the sponsor on Wednesday. So I usually film like Monday, Tuesday work through the night until Wednesday finishing the okay, script how about, and stuff. This is making me feel bad. How about we yeah. talk about something different? <laughs> yeah, I, I have a video I'm planning for this month that I started a year ago, and I'm honestly considering not finishing it this month. In a way, I really envy you guys <laughs> no. have, having <laughs> don't, or don't, taking the no. time to finish stuff no, on the other no, side. I'm nope, that's such not a it. procrastinator. Mm-mm. If I would do it this way, I think I would never finish anything. We are wrong. You're right. We are wrong. <laughs> you right. know that stage, stage one that you were talking about, how you like do everything yeah. that you've been putting off for a little yeah. bit? Like That stage lasts for about one and a half months for me before I start working <laughs> on the next Wait, sorry, what, Kevin? Like, What do you mean? You just don't do anything? Little the well, procrastination stage. Yeah. yeah, the procrastination stage. So it's a six month process, but five months and three weeks of procrastination. There's still a hole in my screen from when the hurricane hit. I've got a there's like leaves that fall in my pool. I, <laughs> I mean on the plus side, Kevin, like the the there the shots in your last video with, with the yeah. knife rocket, like there some of those shots are like legitimately the coolest fucking thing I've seen at least this year. If there was if there was a category in streamies of just coolest fucking <laughs> shot in a video, I would nominate that that rocket going into the refrigerator at the end. That is like thank you. Amazing. <laughs> just I feel like there's a streamies joke in here somewhere. If the streamies, if a streamies had a category for content creators that weren't just a big marketing thing. Yeah, how many of us have been are invited to the streamies? Because it's not me. If the streamies had a science education category that didn't have Mark Rober in it, <laughs> and I knew that I was going to lose because they never actually invited me to the streamies. They just like yeah. nominated me. So I'm like, well, if Mark wins again this year, how many in a row is that? Uh, at least uh, two or three. I can't, I honestly... No, like seven. Which is at least two or three. I don't know, at that point, it's kind of like... I like, actually think uh, Alex has a chance to win this year. Really? I think he's had a good year, yeah. I don't think they'll... No way. To overtake Marky Mark? Yeah, no. Like, no. I, I can't believe they don't have... They don't have... <clears throat> this is why I think these award shows are like a total joke. No, they're they're never going to see this. Uh, and so I'm going to talk as much yeah, as Yeah, and they I weren't want. inviting me anyway, so I want exactly. them to invite me just so I can say no. I got nominated during uh, COVID, and so it was just, like, meaningless. I mean, it was meaningless yeah, even if that I... happened to me, too. Like, oh, I thought you were going to win that one, so... Me? Yeah. Against Marky Mark. No, no one wins against Marky Mark. <laughs> Wait, no way. Yeah. You know what I think it is? Whoever can drum up the most, like, interest about that, the streamies, probably... Yeah. Is who they want to win. It's, it, whoever can make the award show seem the most legitimate. And so, like, yeah. you know, if I was going to do an award show, like this, the I, like I think you know, a channel like CNC Kitchen, Stefan, like there's there the, the streamers would never, ever, ever give a channel like yours an award because they don't actually care about science and education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, arguably a more informative channel than like yeah. you know Mark any Robert. any other. Well, yeah, I, I didn't want to say Captain Crunch, but yeah, I'll say it. <laughs> but I'm also going to put myself in the same category as him as not worthy of <laughs> award. Um, you know, and it's like, you know, he does. I mean, there's a lot of good about Mark's channel, but like they just sort of it's very easy to just sort of ignore the like the actual like, you know, more, I don't know, like smart, I guess. I don't know. I think part of the problem is like there's only two ways to give out awards, right? Like to deem who deserves it is you get a secret panel who decides or it's a popularity contest. And I don't really know if it works in between. Yeah. So either popularity, Mark just wins every time. And then it's a, it's a secret <laughs> panel. Then everyone's mad because no one – it's like who are these people? So I don't even know what the yeah. proper solution is. It should be other creators. Be. That... We should make our own award show. Can we do the safety the 30s? Cummies. The safeties? <laughs> the safeties. The safeties. <laughs> the yeah, we could do our own award show. <laughs> Mark is Wait, banned Alan, you're from good at acronyms. <laughs> Canadian United 
um, yeah, let me, uh, all right, Canadian, ostensibly Canadian king. Canadian, ostensibly Canadian king. What? C O C K. <laughs> Keep up, Nigel. <laughs> Canadian United Media, Memory YouTube. I nominate Stefan for the first cummy. Can we give <laughs> Stefan our first cummy? <laughs> Hey, Stefan, at least we're not opening the caterpillar today. I, I, just, I wanted to ask, is the prize your gummy caterpillar? This no, no. That one's mine forever. That one's Ooh. an heirloom. That would be a good prize. I think he still has the mold. That could be. Oh, my God. Imagine if that was our award. <laughs> gave people one of those. And it's just the whole show is the big. Like, it's just one big joke. And somehow it, it's more meaningful than every other award. And somehow <laughs> Mark Rober wins every year at ours also. <laughs> But we do that just so he has a pile of Heimlich. <laughs> now, Mark, we know we don't we don't want to win, and we know that you'll never show up to accept your award. But we have your yeah. address, and we'll keep shipping up to you. What if the category was just Best Mark Rober of the Year? <laughs> and like, there's five nominees, and they're all Mark Rober. <laughs> oh no, I want to do this so bad. <laughs> We could do it. What if we did it? What if we just did the cummies? We yeah. just do it. We should do it like a we do like a live stream on the safety. <laughs> oh my channel. god! Yeah, exactly. Can we like do at that? the end of the year or something, like a New Year's stream. Yeah, and then we could give some like cummies to actual like <laughs> yeah. you know the because I, I was talking I was talking to Will about this the other day of like um like you know sometimes you'll be looking for just information on YouTube and you'll find like a three minute video some guy made in his garage eight years ago like playing with plasma yes. or something and then like kevin it's always you that i see in the comment section of like like the russian like <laughs> mm -hmm. microwave magnetron video and oh, it's, like yeah. backyard scientists there's like whoa this is so cool from like five years ago <laughs> we should have a category Probably just for like Zilla popper the other day like i was just looking for like information on how strong different colors of loctite are versus like super glue and it's like there's dudes just in their garage going Hey there, I just want to test out. I've got three bolts, three nuts, and I've got a force meter. And let's, and it's just, they just test it and they One show you dude, the data. Three nuts and a force meter. <laughs> like, I would give that guy a cummy. I definitely yeah. would. It's like, like, no one's going to watch that video. YouTube does not, like, actively see the value in those sorts of videos. And it's like, our no. jobs depend on those sorts of videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's this, this channel called, uh, I mean, everyone's probably familiar with this guy, Project Farm. Yeah. I haven't heard. And Farm. you may not have heard of it, but you've probably seen the videos recommended. And I remember I first watched one of this, this guy's videos and I was like, I was like, ah, like, it's just kind of feels like, you know, like a weird, oh, like, yeah. but then I think he, he started like, he did it. Okay. So what he does, the premise is he, he'll buy like the same tool, but like from a bunch of different brands and he'll like test them. So he does like, you know, he'll test like oil, he'll test the wrenches, he'll test. I mean, the guy's tested like everything. And I remember like, like long ago, I saw one of them and it felt like a little weird. It kind of just, I'm not sure how I felt about it. Like I didn't feel bad about it, but it just kind of felt like, you know, just, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be negative, but after a while, the videos turned into what I think is like another example of one of like the best YouTube channels out there from just like a pure technical standpoint like it just this guy does such a good job delivering exactly how you would want someone to test different things because like how do you test how good a pair of pliers is like i don't know you just sort of be like hey what does that guy use that i know and yeah just, exactly he like his pliers and or a youtuber you know like you know the only thing i could say like what's if you ask me right now uh what's the best pair of pliers i'd probably say like like nightbex yeah. And it's just because my old job used to use them and I, just, I, I have like a them. pair and I like them. And I'm like, but other than that, it's like, like 30 bucks for a pair of pliers, you know, you know they're pretty, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, project farm is another good example of, of someone who just is like so good at conveying, you know, information that is super valuable. I would give him a cummy. Are we calling <laughs> yeah. cummies or are we, <laughs> we? No, yeah, we can give him a cummy. <laughs> I think we just give we just give them out. <laughs> no, it has to be a contest. How many do we have? Do we have to like restrain them in, or do we we can just let? I think them it's loose? really funny if we have an award show where we give out like five hundred of these things. <laughs> do we call it? We blast everyone them? everyone who deserves one. I guess should yes. get one. Yes, it's like a t-shirt cannon kind of thing. You're just like blasting. Mm -hmm. We're just blasting. 
Well, that's, <laughs> I guess that, that's too unspecific, but... We just, it becomes like the end of a, like a video listing its patrons, right? Just the names go by and we, we just mail them each one of these horrendous things. I can never tell if people listening to this think this is funny or if they want us to stop. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Who would you give a cummy to? So, it, it is a well-known channel, but it's, it's, <sighs> he also does it differently. Do you not, uh, do, are you guys coffee drinkers? Do you guys know James Hoffman? Hoffman? Uh, I I've don't. never heard he, of him. He's though. he's no. a. I so I'm if, drinking some like watered down cold brew. I don't know coffee. Okay, very so bad. So James Hoffman is the uh, coffee guru. He he used to be like a world champion barista. Or whatever has a they have ch championships for that. That's a thing. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. I don't know how. That sounds it, amazing. That his entire channel is coffee. Every single video is about coffee. But it's not like just uh, this tastes like this and this tastes like that. He tries to use scientific methods and, and really good approaches to tell you w which is the best grinder. How do you uh, perfectly brew your coffee and, 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 and things like that. And this, that's just what I enjoy. And uh, to be totally honest, that was the initial idea when I started my channel. I wanted to do cooking videos in the beginning. <laughs> Oh, really? so cooking videos is. for engineers. So the kitchen, the kitchen. Yeah, that oh, is kitchen. literally a kitchen. Ah. So, yeah, James Hoffman deserves a cummy. Like, like I have a list of video ideas from ages ago that, like, I, I will never do any of these anymore because they're sort of just di YouTube's different realm, I guess. Um, what about shorts? Could do shorts. That's a yeah. good idea, actually. The shorts have, have opened a huge door to just some weird stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ideas I wanted to do is, like, what's the best way to make coffee? And that was like one video. This guy's entire channel is yeah. literally all the like insane and weird ways to make coffee. I mean, he's got like there's a there's a recent video from two weeks ago. He's got like two dozen different brands of coffee, and he's like the best USA grocery store coffee, deep frying coffee from a month a month ago. He's got one on the the, the wow, uh, yeah, that's got two Sivert, and a half million Sivert, views. Sivert, how do you say the cat? Sivert poop coffee. Oh, Sivert, Sivert, uh, yeah, Sivert, yeah. They eat it, and they poop Sivert it out, and then, yeah, and it's a forty dollar cup of coffee in San Francisco. Uh -huh. And like all these different machines, like this, this is what YouTube was was I like think built for, and you know, I mean, these videos do pretty good too, so that's good. That makes me happy because I I, I really think there's something nice about giving people a platform. And the justification to explore weird ideas. Like, that's something that's hard to convey to people. And I think that, like, you know, like, Stefan's channel is is right on that, this mark of, like, like an idea that a lot of people would have or think about. But as, like, a passing thought. And never, ever in their wildest dreams, like, actually follow through and try to, like, explore it. Because... You know, you've got like a, a job or a family or, you know, you got to rake leaves in the backyard. Like, what are you going to do? Spend three Whatever weeks? Whatever it is normos do. Rake yeah. leaves. Like, you can't spend three weeks doing this little, making some little thing. Like, it's like it's stupid. Like, why would you do that? And so YouTube has provided this, like, such a good opportunity for someone. Like, I have this weird idea. I want to test it. And it's essentially my job. And it mm -hmm. pays yeah. for well, itself. Like, that is so cool. Because that's kind of how science began. I mean, it in general, science began as just, I mean, it was a bunch of rich people who just had the yeah. time to just, mm -hmm. they, basically, they just tried to <laughs> come up. That's how it ended, too. Yeah, but they kind of came up with, like, just, it was just a bunch of rich people trying to find cool things that they could flex on yeah. their friends with. People listening to this right now are like, <laughs> you're a bunch of YouTubers. No, but I'm Man. saying, like, imagine if, if Michael Faraday had a YouTube channel. That would have been so oh. cool. But it's like, now, now, it's like, then it got kind of hijacked by, you know, industry and academia and everything. But with YouTube, it's kind of flipping back where... Like you just said. You Wait, I'm saying, did you say rich people hijacked, got hijacked by academia? Well, I'm saying science. It, it kind of was like you could only do science in industry or academia. Okay, okay. And, but now it's like you can spend three weeks, like you said, doing something that doesn't seem – it's like there's no – you're not selling a product. You're not like trying to – it's just you think it's cool and you think other people will like it. And you can now financially justify just spending – like three weeks on something so i find that it is kind of you know going back to what science is really about to a certain yeah, degree that's true yeah. and i think people are putting out like research grade exactly. experiments and tests mm -hmm. and yes. videos and just because they're not writing like a formal paper doesn't paper. mean that they're not doing like legitimate research 
So before I started, I used to read so many shitty papers, especially on 3D printing. Mm. And I've, I, I'm still working in additive manufacturing research at my normal job. You and mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I do have two jobs. It's, it's a bad idea. I get videos out on time mm -hmm. and I have a normal job. Mm -hmm. Ain't I German? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the key. No, that was the secret. That's it. Yeah, it's the German Damn. precision, the German no. engineering. I mean, I'm quarter German, I so I have some of that somewhere. <laughs> What's your excuse then? <laughs> I have some of it somewhere. Where's the, I haven't where's found the laziness it. I haven't come found from? it. That's why I make videos sometimes. So wait, it's a quarter German, half Japanese, and Japanese people have good work ethic. So what's the quarter yeah. that's holding you back, no, but Nigel? Japanese the quarter people work a left. lot, but they're not efficient. The French? <laughs> mm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy Quebecer. <laughs> I'm not part French. <laughs> yeah, we think that's a joke, but there's probably somebody out there who's actually really offended by that. <laughs> And if anybody would be offended, it's the French Canadians. Wow. <laughs> I think they're just... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's, it's so good that they are now hiding the dislikes. Well, they can't cancel us because they can't speak English, so it's okay. <laughs> they're not allowed to. They're legally obligated to not understand that we're making fun of them. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I, I don't know. It, it just... I, I noticed that there's so much sh shitty stuff around and, and people that are doing research who don't really know a ton about the topic. So I, I just thought, yeah, let's just do it, do, do it yourself. And the thing is, YouTube gives you an incentive to, to document stuff mm -hmm. be because before I would have just done the tests and just be okay with it. And I would have gained a bit of knowledge and maybe told my friends, but nobody really 3D prints there. So uh, mm. I thought, yeah, that's, let's just put it out. And I actually remember my, my coworkers before I started telling me, ah, that, that's so dumb what you're doing at home, your 3D printing research. <laughs> Loser. Uh, <laughs> look where we are now. Uh, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's how Two a jobs. lot of us started. <laughs> Two jobs. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel like a lot of us started where it's like, you're just kind of doing it. No, people don't really understand yeah. it. YouTube gives you such a big platform that, yeah. that you have hundreds of thousands and millions of people mm. who are interested mm. in what you're doing from, from yeah. all over the world. And that's the great thing. And I'm so happy that I did not decide to make my videos in German because... <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Hugely want, limiting. Just one thing you said, too, was about how it lets you document everything. I think that at yeah. least specifically for chemistry, like that's something that's really, really, really uh, different. Because every paper that's written, it's just words on a paper, and they'll describe the reaction, and it's like, it's so different being able to see things actually working, versus oh, yeah. just reading some text. Even for three D printing, I'm sure yeah. it, it's just like, oh, do this, do this, do this, and you're reading it. You're like, okay, I guess. Like you, it, it's not the same as just seeing a video and then it happening. But you're tr often trying to follow, like procedures written written in like. Uh, scientific papers H how good are they usually do they really are they easy to follow and and produce a result in the, in the end or is there still not in a, chemistry papers i would say i've come to the conclusion this is my my big conspiracy i don't think it, i don't even think it is a conspiracy the big problem is if you're in academia and you're writing a chemistry paper you ideally if it's a big discovery you kind of want a patent on it sometimes but yeah. mm. sometimes you can't get the patent or it's expensive. So what you do instead is you write the paper so that there's enough information that people think the procedure's there, but you leave out yeah. like a very key piece okay. that if you don't do that, the thing fails. And I'm convinced yeah. that a lot of people do that. So a lot of papers, it's a notorious thing in chemistry where people are like, papers just don't work. Sometimes they work flawlessly. And then otherwise, other times it just yeah. doesn't work. And I'm convinced people just leave stuff out because they don't want the idea to be patented by someone else. Is or it just be because taken. you've never gotten gotten chemistry to work when you say, replicate <laughs> what's in papers, Nigel? Is that where this no, is just coming like, from? I mean, there are really bad <laughs> chemists or everyone else is so, wrong. No, no, because in chemistry... <laughs> and the answer is everyone else yes, is wrong. <laughs> I can explain to you. So basically, it's kind of like um, they will leave... Because I do it too when I present my videos. I will leave out details that I just don't think are that important, but practically you can't replicate it without it. I'm not doing it for any mm. purpose. So there is, I think, bad intent and then also just kind of people just writing stuff the way they do. It's too much information for everybody. But yeah. even one simple example is if I said I ran a reaction, and this is classic in a paper, they'll be like, oh, we ran this for an hour and then we let it stir overnight. Yeah. 
the classic is, did it have to be stirred overnight or did they just go home? Because their work day was <laughs> over. It'll be like, we made a grilled cheese by gr- by <laughs> grilling some cheese on a stovetop for 15 minutes. Yeah. And then the grilled cheese was served. And you're like, I feel like there's there should be some more information no, but, in there. But even then, you'd go, does it have to be 15 minutes? Does it have to be a stovetop? Like, they don't put a, the details... Yeah, oh, sometimes we forgot it's, to mention that you pivotal. have to grease the you yeah. have to grease the pan. Oh yeah, they, they mm. just don't mention it. They're like, well, that's obvious. If you're cooking, you got to grease it. And you're like, well, and I did. Like, the product would be an off white color with a tinge of yellow, and you're like, hey, Reggie, is this is this off white? Does this look off white? It's just you? black. You're like, because <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, they never really describe it. So you're like, I hope I this is right. YouTube, what what like YouTube gets a lot like. <laughs> There's a level, like a very kind of sad level of like disrespect for <laughs> making YouTube videos. And I think it's funny because YouTube is essentially like, like you're, you're a communicator, right? Like you're not just making videos and you're not doing science or, you know, building weird stuff. Like you're, you're trying to communicate ideas. Mm-hmm. Like a YouTube video is probably a lot more difficult to make. Like, like a Nile Red youtube video is an order of magnitude more difficult to make than a paper because not only do you have to convey the ideas but you have to do it in a way that is like visually understandable and like like verbally easy to follow yeah but but somehow you're like obligated to actually do like real research and then you're gonna have some guy scrutinizing it like the worst youtube commenter you've ever seen (laughs) yeah probably that's, that's like there's something about creating like like online content where you're going to get a lot of feedback and you're going to get feedback in multiple areas of people just being confused. Like you're going to, you're going to learn that people are confused by your video and then most likely try to change that going forward. Cause you know, you want people to understand what's going on. Like that's, I guess the whole point of making a video is for people to consume your, your story that you're telling. Um, and I think that there's a lot of value that, creators put into making videos especially in the like scientific area i mean like look at like uh three blue one brown mm-hmm. have you watched any of that guys videos mm-hmm. yeah. the the, yeah. the <laughs> visualizations on screen are you kidding me what is this shit i haven't seen stuff like i know that ever i haven't seen it on discovery channel i haven't seen it on the TL- who makes math videos on tv i well, don't know who to compare them to no but there's no such thing as it's, math on it's, tv it is god tier yeah because mm-hmm. he like he, he his animations are done in python, python. yeah he he designed his own everything to make them. Dude, there there are companies that spend millions of dollars. They spend more money making it so that textbooks are expensive than they spend making the textbooks. Mm-hmm. And then you have this lunatic, this mad lad, <laughs> who's who's hand coding Math animations lab. that are t- an order of magnitude better than any explanation I've ever seen in any sort of textbook. I just want to. Do you know how hard it was to get information like this back in the day? Mm. Like sometimes I'll try to look up how to build a Tesla coil, and I'll end up on mm. some some Tesla coil mailing list from the '90s. And there's people like just texting, like emailing each other about <laughs> oh, what Christ. capacitors to. I don't know. It, it's nuts. And then you have like all these individual blog sites that people would have, like their from their ISP. It would be like you know some rando isp would host these people's blog sites and you'd have to go like find these blogs find this information then they would all like yeah. link to each other in their blogs mm-hmm. and there was no good centralized platform for learning or sharing information i mean and then youtube came along and i think that that's probably like the biggest thing i think in a lot of ways though it's gotten worse i feel like it peaked like a couple of years ago yeah. where i i noticed at some point there was a time where like you know, you could put in something like Tesla coil information, especially into into YouTube and get results of people just like dicking around their backyards is what you really want. Yeah. But like now if you do that, they have like that sort of optimized <laughs> search result where like That's it just true. gives you like sort of the top five. And then it's like viewers also saw that and you don't really get the straight results that you're looking for anymore. Yeah, you don't get the guy in the garage like. Yeah, yeah. The, the guy like tricks. You get the guy with like playing music. I tried to refine this video. There was a video from years ago that I had seen and I, you know, didn't, didn't like it or add to a place or anything. And it was just a guy with a Tesla coil had a cup, a metal cup attached to a wire to the top load. And he was just pouring water out of the cup to see what the streamers would do coming off of the water that was pouring out the cup connected oh, to the top cool. load. And yeah, it was really cool. And I was like, I was like, oh, like I, I kind of want to see what that looked like for like a future video. And I just, it's gone. I cannot find it anymore. It's no yeah. amount of like search result terms. I, I cannot find it. 
YouTube search results are kind of bad. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're optimized for something that we're not looking for. Yeah. I was looking for videos of, um, like, you know, like, like, like just viral videos of kids doing stupid stuff. Yeah. And I, it's for a video I'm editing right now. And I could not find any of like the old classic mm -hmm. videos. I was, it was actually sort of astounding. I'm like, oh my God, like, did someone just, like, did these just get kind of like swept into this, like a trash bin at some point? It was like, and, like it's all thing? gone. Copa, like, it's just Copa. all gone. I think they're just, I think they're just harder to find. Because they don't want to, like, is it, do they not exist? Or is it, like, search engine optimization where they're trying to deliver, like, new stuff? Like, like it's, like, the algorithm or the, the search algorithms, like, so rarely recommend older stuff. I just think it's just there's so many pieces of trash layered on, you know, people are just uploading stuff all the time, so it's just diluted. Like, I was looking up uh, earlier today, I was trying to find the video of the guy who um, uh, lights a deodorant can on fire. Or he puts a, a firecracker to it and it blo and he blows it off. Do you do you remember that, Kevin? A classic. Yeah, it's a classic. The, the, I, I don't remember. I remember that firsthand. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> the video is video. just the video is just so funny because he just does it in like a parking lot and his reaction. <laughs> he like walks like three feet away. <laughs> it's so bad. Or like there was a kid that kicked a, a soccer ball filled with gasoline or something oh, like that. Oh god. But that was a what? classic. This sounds like a bad idea. It's like just as bad of an idea as kicking a soccer ball full of water. What the hell? But people No, no, I think he just maybe poured things. gas on it and then he kicked it and then his foot was on fire. And then like, you know. The video is like right. 15 years old. That was that's exactly what I was. That's looking as good for. as we got back then. Well, the question okay. is, if YouTube demonetized the video, they don't want to want to show it to you anymore because I they know. can't really play ads on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too yeah. dangerous. Yep, kids lighting themselves on fire. So the internet was meant for it's technical videos that give you the information you want and kids lighting themselves <laughs> on fire. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, oh, in porn too. <laughs> yeah, bring it all back. <laughs> All right, I want to I want to ask you uh, some 3D printing stuff. Um, there's this. Okay, so there's a, a movie called Bugs Life. <laughs> there's a movie called Bugs Life, and in this movie called Bugs Life, there's this caterpillar called Heim Heimlich. Is it Heimlich? Heimlich? I think it's Heimlich. I, I think I, we've looked this up multiple Heimlich. times. I'm Heimlich. surprised every time that's just Heimlich. Because Heimlich is a name, right? Yeah, it is Heimlich. Because yeah, Heimlich yeah. maneuver is, I'm assuming, like a doctor or some. Yeah, yeah that that guy's still alive. He's still around. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I know. The Heimlich maneuver you think of as like this really old thing, but it was invented very recently. That guy is still really? alive. Yeah, what Heimlich is still here. before the Heimlich maneuver? Everyone just died when they choked on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like inventing a reverse bear hug and they name it after you? <laughs> not trying to discredit it. But, he, he, uh, he's actually not alive anymore. He died in uh, 2016. What? He died? Oh, no. no I, he, he, outdated. Sending he, he fake joked, news he for the last... He on a wiener. <laughs> he joked. <laughs> he, he was eating a big sausage and joked on it. I'm gonna, I found the video. I'm going to share it to you guys. You can watch it. Wait, of his death? No, Jesus no. Just of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, sorry. No, no. Of the... Uh, just, just the deodorant can explosion. These are, these are the good old days of the internet. You gotta watch it and describe it for us, for the uh, the watchers and listeners. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody can see it. it. Just even how he starts, it, he's like, "Think big." What is he doing? Is he holding? You, it or you, he need, you it need the sound. You need the sound because you need his commentary. Well, you too. gotta make the sound for us, because then we gotta embed the video in it. You just gotta, you gotta. It, it's this guy holding a big can of deodorant. It's like the size of a can of spray paint, and there's what? a a little a bomb strapped to there's it. A little fire. There's like a it, big firecracker. <laughs> It's like an M80, probably like a you know but, a real M80. But you need the audio because he's like it, on the can, the hairspray says Maxim. Uh, so it's Maximo Think Big. So he's like, think, this is the worst. He's like, think YouTube big, huh? Ever watched. Yeah, that's what I. What <laughs> this is worse than a reaction channel. <laughs> <laughs> a description channel. You just you describe what's happening. You just have video. to watch it because the audio is great. <laughs> Sorry, Will. What were the three D printing questions that you had for Stefan? <laughs> Yeah, uh, my first layer is, it doesn't stick. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, how many emails do you get like that? Use hairspray. So, I, I still unfortunately <laughs> answer too many, too many emails that I, no, that I get. No, don't do I it. Seriously do. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who was asking about detergents is really mad at us, Kevin. Do they ever send you like a... Like, hey, look, it actually worked, or did no, they just No, he just, in the in? server, he tagged all of us. He tagged all of 
there's a there's a guy in the safety third server who uh was asking us he, like because we have a questions thing that we do after we do like a, a patreon exclusive uh he kept asking us about detergents <laughs> This is why I want to ask you because we sort of talk about this all the time, um, and he just—he's like, I just realized that uh, I've become the detergent guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, detergent guy. That was never my intention. <laughs> to answer to answer your question, uh, just smear something on your print pad, uh, glue stick, hairspray, and there, there, there have actually been plenty of companies popping up just. Uh, selling products to to getting your first layers to stick, like rebranded hairspray. Okay, so how many emails do you get, a, a, a like a day or a week asking for help? Is it like one a day? Is it ten a day? I I would say like, what one? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't answer all of them anymore. But I try to answer most. How of many them. do you that's get? How I I would probably say like five of them, including like Twitter a day? messages a day. Wow. Okay. Twitter messages. So people asking for like basic technical help. Sometimes, yeah, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it is it is bad. That's maybe one of the reasons why I have my two week video schedule. I don't do anything productive for a week because I'm just answering emails, and then I notice that I need to start working on stuff. How often does it feel like they haven't even tried to like search for the answer? Always, because <laughs> if, if I don't know something, I just put it into Google and, and you find 50 others who ex had exactly the same problem. And I, I, I feel stupid still answering those questions, but I don't know. I try to be a nice guy, but still I'm stupid in the end. I only do it when it feels like they have done their research yeah. and have like struggled a little bit. Like if they yeah. haven't struggled at all, which a lot of times yeah. it feels like, I just won't. I literally will not even answer it. The thing is, um, and I have been, I have been fighting with mm -hmm. myself for years over that. Uh, over that, I have my my Instagram messages and my Twitter messages open because under oh, no. fifty messages that I get, there is usually one to five where people are sharing really interesting things that mm. I yeah. either really make videos out of or learn something for myself so i thought yeah it's it's maybe worth going through them if there if there are those unicorn messages that are worth try worth working on but i think what will's talking about is you know people asking for yeah. help on a project <laughs> and kevin so my triggered. <laughs> I, I type out a long response you know i really want to make yeah. sure that they they get the right information and then they end up like never doing it or yeah. they never get back to me yeah. or they just they don't understand yeah <laughs> I think you, know, you should do you should uh, take all of the responses you've written out so far put them train I, a yeah. gpt bot on those just, responses and just have that answer well, people from imagine it on. tells them something horrible then you're you're lying i would actually do that <laughs> i used to do that i would get so many questions about the same thing like on this video everyone wants to know how i made the rocket fuel so <laughs> what's what's worse is it worse where it's like kind of a pretty like established thing like 3d printing and people are asking questions that the answer is widely available online or somebody asking very specifics about a niche thing that they've done zero research on like like someone being like i would like to build you know this thing how do i do it or like you know like sorry detergent guy <laughs> um you know i like, <laughs> like i, I need you know i want dispensing. i want to you know how do what was the question even like how do i make a detergent or i want to find a detergent you you guys like didn't really even it was such a vague question <laughs> that you like didn't even know where to start answering like what's worse the vague question where they haven't honed in at all on a specific that you could actually help them with or something where there's already a, like a ton of information online where it's like the only answer you'll give them is something that you could find on a forum or a, a similar question somewhere else like yeah. i don't know what's i would worse. say to be fair i think the big thing is like after just making videos for a long time working on projects i've built a whole like i guess process that i don't even think about how to research it and then how to actually do it Whereas I feel a lot of these people, they're kind of, when they think about the whole process, it's overwhelming. So the first step is just asking somebody for help. Mm -hmm. um, it feels yeah. like the easiest thing to get started. But then yeah. the person you're asking help from is like, well, I can't just tell you a Hounded sentence with, that's going to yeah. fix your life. Like you kind of need to do all this base level <laughs> research. So they're just but kind I of stuck. That's, that's, yeah. a really, th that's a really interesting thought mm. because we're all so honed into this kind of scientific approach to a problem 
people who maybe never did that during their education mm -hmm. life and, and things like that never really experienced researching something and trying to come up with a problem and how to properly do that. So m yeah. maybe we shouldn't feel too bad about I that. don't. I think I think I feel bad about feeling bad because I've been in this situation. Like I remember yeah. when I was a kid, uh, mm -hmm. I'd get popular science magazines. Rest in peace. I mean, they still <laughs> make them, but nobody <laughs> gets them. Um, I also realized now, like, kind of how, like, uh, you know, like the the I fucking love science sort mm -hmm. of things. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. popular science is like pretty. Like when you, it just it's not great. Really looking back at it now, like it's a lot of garbage. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Popular science is definitely responsible for the you know where my flying cars <laughs> shit. But there was a section where it'd be like projects or things you could do, and yeah. one of them was this guy who was who had made this phone charger and it was, it was a five volt regulator and a nine volt battery. <laughs> in Hell an yeah. Like literally it was five volt battery, sorry, nine volt battery, five volt regulator, USB plug. And so it was like a portable, it was like a, a battery, like a portable battery bank that you could charge your phone with. And I was like, Oh my God, like that's, I want to, I could build that. So I, I ordered one for who knows how much it was like, you know, 10 bucks, which is <laughs> an absolute <laughs> rip off. Uh, and I put it together and I think I killed my dad's iPod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I know that I killed my dad's iPod. And uh, I definitely killed my dad's iPod. Well, uh, so why, I, why don't they label the legs on the 7805? Dude, That's bullshit. I you know, you swap know. it around, you oh, wait, everything. This gets worse. Oh, shit. I forgot the story gets worse. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. This is embarrassing. <laughs> um, so I... You know, how do you mess up putting together a, like a five volt regulator circuit, right? Because it's what you put voltage on one side and then the regulated power comes out the other. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, and I was like, I think I needed like a resistor or something. And I was like, okay, so there's like a five volt regulator, nine volt battery uh, and the USB port. So it's like, maybe why the reason it's not working is because I have the wrong resistor. So I'm like, what's the resistance of a USB port? <laughs> 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 yes Those so i'm like at my grandma's questions. house and uh i like i think my step grandpa had a multimeter i think i borrowed the multimeter uh and i shove it into the usb port and i killed my grandma's computer <laughs> <laughs> you, were I, like, you, were, I, you were trying to measure the resistance of your oh, grandma's oh, computer usb port I with a like, multimeter i was like 12 and the internet, all the internet had at that point was Neopets and porn. Um, and Neopets porn. Yeah. Well, that's all I could find at least. <laughs> and I'm like, why has no one answered? But, you know, it's so like I can imagine. I remember sending the guy an email too. I was like, you know, I, I don't even remember what the email was. But I can imagine it being something like, you know, it's not working. Like, I don't, what's the resistance of a USB yeah. port? Um, which is exactly the kind of email I can imagine getting now. Yeah. <laughs> I would be thinking that this kid did zero research. Uh, <laughs> and then realized that well not only did the kid do zero research but the kid had no idea even how to do the research but he's trying to figure it out and has nobody in his life who is willing to even give him the basics of it like have you ever been in a situation where you want to ask a question but you don't even know how to yeah. ask the question and i think that the frustrations that that you know we have is just as like forward facing people experts in in what people you know like we're just accessible and so they come to us and so it's like it's a very large amount of people kind of asking those questions, and I think it just gets a little bit tiring. How good of a job do you think, like, just like Wolfram Alpha would do if we just plugged in all the questions we get just into Wolfram Alpha? And what just is spit the up? resistance of a USB port? <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm I, gonna if ask anybody Wolfram listening to this knows right what now. the resistance of a USB <laughs> port is, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm, wait, I'm gonna ask it right now. What is the resistance? <laughs> Shit, years. I should buy my grab a new computer. <laughs> yeah. like 20 years, 10 years, 12, Jesus, 18 years later. Um, okay, <laughs> here we go. It's saying um, electrical resistance, common symbol R, standard unit ohm. I could tell you what um, it is because it's not, it's the, the answer, it's not the right answer. It is. It's, it's giving you a range of the typical minimum insulation resistance for circuits with up to a thousand volt nominal voltage. So no, it has no idea. The what, default what value, the default resistance value of a USB port is 10 ohms. Mm. It, okay. So the thing is, it's not resistive. It's just, it's how much power the USB port is allocating. So mm -hmm. it's deciding how much current it's allowing to leave the port. Uh, so it's it's not resistance, it's just like a power. <laughs> it'll, it's like a battery has internal. It's essentially it's allowing yeah. 
500 yeah. milliamps by default out. And I think they can negotiate up to, to two amps out. So it's not, I mean, you could, you could plug it into Ohm's law, but it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it does make sense because if you try to draw more than 500, then it starts behaving like a resistor because the voltage. I mean, yeah. Electricity but, is just is just really hard, you know. There's there's a yeah. lot of stuff that I still don't understand about electricity. What don't you understand? Alan? And so, like, I remember, like, yeah, getting back and in, getting into like kits uh, in like fifth grade, like little electronics kits. I had no idea what I was doing. If a five volt regulator is hard to put together, electronics is very confusing. Yeah, my dad tried. He got me like electronic learning lab kits yeah. and the spring ones where you bend the springs back. Yes, and... yes, 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 exactly. And there's I a couple like potentiometers on the side. Mm-hmm. You could, what did like, you have spring... growing up in Germany? They probably had all sorts of cool shit. Yeah. So my dad is an electrician, and I remember also having something like that where you kind of had a, a really simple schematic and, and built a um, an fm radio out of it yes that's cool that's but i don't remember how how it was called um but yeah i they have some that i've seen where it's like it's just one kit like an fm radio but it's like it's all the plastic pieces and you like have to wrap the wire on mm-hmm. and oh, then yeah. there's another one i had that a family friend bought for me that was called like shit i can't remember what it was called but it literally was was it components or was it like it was it was weird because it was almost like like it was like coil springs mm-hmm. but the springs were completely compressed mm-hmm. and you would yeah. like bend them back to form a gap. and then you would like put the led in it and then was it was like just a leds though, or was it like weird components was it like leds packaged in like a little thing or was it no just no i think LED? they were actual components because i think the center of the kit was a big breadboard oh i had a different mine was a cardboard <laughs> with springs in it it was less good than what you're describing kevin <laughs> i think i still have it somewhere i probably saved it somewhere in like my my I, childhood i didn't home. do any of this I so, so what i remember that that my be- uh, that my dad sometimes bought me so we had a big electronics vendor in, in germany where you still had those old catalogs that was like 25 25 years ago and there were a bunch of electronics kits for making i don't know with a uh, with a uh, a random number generator and things like that and you Hmm. got all you got the pcb and all the components but i don't know if i if i always was too lazy of reading the manual because i just soldered it together and when it worked it was fine and when it didn't work it of course it was bad i never knew what was going on it was just like legos to me yeah i and this is the thing I, I'm I'm asking myself: Was there any documentation included that would have at least given me a bit of the background what I'm doing? Because that would be great. Ev. I don't think so. I don't. If I had to guess, I would I would probably say no. That I, I don't think those kits usually had that sort of thing. They would just kind of like tell you what to do. Okay, do you, you have it? it? Do you have one? No, you ready? I got something even better. So like like a year ago or maybe a year and a half. Oh, ago. Oh, you got the Spintronics. I got the Spintronics. I supported this Kickstarter campaign called Spintronics. And I just got it. And it is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wish I had this as a kid. Um, I haven't played with it yet, but it is a mechanical representation of electrical circuits. I'm going to see which one is more complicated. This looks oh, like so, ve- um, oh, my God. That's very interesting and complicated. So it is, let's take the reflection off of it. It is basically a bunch of spinning components that are linked together with chains. And then there's this kind of big spring-loaded thing right here that's a battery. So you like you charge it up by pulling back on the the cable, uh, and it basically creates like a, a voltage by creating a force. And then the speed that everything spins at is the current. So like the pr- huh. like the torque is the voltage, I think, and then the speed is the current. And these all the different components. Like I think that's a capacitor. I think that uh, they have like little remember. tiny these, gears these and sprockets diodes. in them. Yeah, there's little sprockets and like so these are like one way like these are diodes so there's like a ratchet or like a one way mechanism. Um, and then there's transistors. I think that might be a transistor where there's like it's like a centripetal or centrifugal centripetal clutch or something like that in there. And so it can like grab on or it's all it, oh. or maybe it's like a different I don't know, but it's like electrical stuff is is very analogous to mechanical stuff, right? Yeah, like water is like, the classic. Yeah, like water is like an, a good analogy. I mean, there's, it, it pisses, I think, I don't know if we complain about this, but it pisses me off when people are like, water is a, a misleading analogy for elect- electricity. It's like, shut, shut up, shut up. Who shut says up. that? It's so good. Any, any a- asshole to say that because people. if you're trying to explain, like, 
using the you don't you, you don't go to like a senior level or masters or graduate level engineering course and expect them to use water to explain shit to you this is like explaining it to to me who was trying to figure out how to charge my dad's iphone <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's who needs the water analogy you dickheads you end up trying to pour water in the usb port <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't even think you can kill a computer nowadays by by shorting the usb mm, it's yeah. like it was just an old shitty motherboard that didn't have any like short protection and mm. those were the good old days sticking the probes in the usb port yeah. where like <laughs> sorry so what one of the first things that i learned when i started with with arduino is buy a usb hub because when you're shorting something only the usb hub dies ah. and and, yeah. mm. and not the usb port on your machine and i'm still using that to, today since i'm 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 always afraid to just that's yeah. smart my, that's a my main board they should have uh it would be nice to have like protection like if you had a like a data only usb cable i don't think that would work though I mean, maybe there is a way to do that or like some sort of isolation because like normally i'll power stuff with a battery as well so like uh, it'll be powered with the battery and connected via usb i never really know yeah, what the right huh. thing is i just can you, you know, do that yeah yeah you can because if you're running if you're driving a servo yeah. And you're plugged into oh, your computer. Right, 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 right. You're gonna overdrive the USB port, uh, and if your computer is not allocating enough current, it will brown out or black out um, right. and restart itself. I just recently killed the uh, headphone and mic jack to my Mac computer because I tried to make my own amplifier. Oh my God, Kevin! <laughs> and I don't know what went wrong, but <laughs> what 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 was that for? Was it like for something like complicated, or you just wanted to? Do no, it? I was just. You know, just no, just like a normal audio amp. What? I just had like a little breadboard, and I was like plugging things in, and I was following this instructions on like free <laughs> like electronic LM three eighty six. Why yeah. were you popular doing science? that though? Are you following the instructions from a popular science magazine? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you building the whole such a weird project? <laughs> You know, you can you can buy like a like a like a twelve watt amplifier off of Amazon for like ten bucks, and it'll show up two days later. <laughs> One of the things I still need to ask you guys, are you still doing things off camera that you're just enjoying, like building an amplifier? None of us enjoy Kevin anything anymore. Is, <laughs> Kevin is the one person I have seen who I think does more stuff off camera than on camera. Um, I kind of do. I, don't, I think I don't know what's wrong with Kevin or how I did something wrong with him. And he's just literally it's like there's some serious, you know, uh, like kind of car radio stealing vibes, except it's like making <laughs> stuff where it's like if he's not doing a thing, you get like the twitches. It's true. <laughs> I do. I'm I like right now I'm making these uh, like I'm trying to make a paw print stamp. So I have I did a, a, a years ago. I did uh, or two years ago. Maybe I got a, a stamp of my cat. So I took some stamps of my cat's uh, paw print. I had mm -hmm. to trim the hair between his toes because <laughs> it was too long. Um, and I did this for some cat warehouse. Uh, we made these little uh, inspection cards that we were sending out with orders for t-shirts. Um, and I was like, well, wouldn't it be cool to have like a stamp of the paw print? So I've just been uh, 3D printing these molds and then uh, spray painting them with like a filler paint and then casting like a silicone into them to try to test the um, you know how good i can how close i can get to what the original like paw print looked like and you know i mean some of them are not not yeah. great <laughs> like this one kind of looks like shit but i did like the you do that one. stuff a lot will yeah. i just think that your projects you know you always are working on something small like the t-shirt showing you know mechanism yeah like i, I, I was always, especially when i was like before before youtube i was doing all sorts of stuff um like i've got this like little yeah, t-shirt printing machine like silk screen printing machine in the garage that i made when i was in high school it's total crap um but nowadays it definitely is a little bit more difficult to work on something it's like well if i'm gonna work on something it would probably be a good idea to make it so that i could make a video about it but mm -hmm. you have to be pretty mm -hmm. subjective or selective when you make mm -hmm. videos about stuff but then you can't you can't really enjoy it that much anymore and that's at least the thing for me i do enjoy the stuff that i'm doing but it is still work in the end yeah mm. so just... i think the hardest part about doing videos to me is actually making the video I was gonna it's say not that. the it's yeah it's not the making of the thing which i think might be a sign that if like i think making videos is still hard but we've just figured out how to make it really hard yeah to the point yeah. where making stuff is like seems like the easy part uh so it's definitely like trying to stitch together a story that is like, you know, 
a little bit like like more of a narrative rather than just like a technical exploration um that is the hard part you know uh a Ben Krasna, mm, applied, applied science. science. Yeah, applied mm -hmm. science. That's like how I wish I could make. That's how I want to make my well, videos. He's got a day job, right? Yeah, he works. Yeah, he I works would at give him a comment. Google X. Yeah, or he used he to work at. Google. Yeah, he worked at Valve, and then he used to do MRI stuff. So he used to do non-magnetic uh, equipment, which I worked at a place that was doing that too. I talked to him a little bit about that, because hmm. um, you have to make equipment that's like non-ferrous hmm. that is going to be around MRI machines. Uh, that was which I was like, holy shit! Like I, I spent like a year, you know, or. I think six months or something working on a um, an encoder that is completely uh, optical and there's no iron in it um, to calibrate the MRI beds. And I, I've done MRI studies before when I was a lab rat. And I remember one of the like fascinating things was they would let you listen to music in there, but they couldn't give you headphones or earbuds or anything because it's like, you know, it's got inductors and stuff inside. And so what they did was it's a pneumatic tube. So they've got a pneumatic tube that, from the control room that goes all the way into the MRI. It's like and string it pipes, cans. It literally pipes music mm -hmm. in through air into your ears that way. They gave me a SpaghettiO can with a string tied to it. Yeah, it's, it's just a fancy fucking a soup can. Whoa. with, with a, Yeah. And I remember thinking like... like 40 grand. Yeah, I, was, I remember thinking like, I would have oh, never thought to do that. I would have just given someone a pair of headphones and then their head would have exploded. <laughs> Alan... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's he's super smart though. He wor he worked at Valve and he worked now what he works at Google. I think he's responsible for some of like the uh, the Valve Index stuff. Um, no. Kevin, oh so yeah, my your Kevin. camera's gone. I think it just it depends what you want. I think out of YouTube, whereas like I think there was a, there's a video I watched of Ben's a while ago, and he just he basically just stated what he wanted from YouTube and what his plans and everything were, and it's like he just wants to make stuff. Like his entire goal is yeah. to just mm -hmm do stuff as a hobby and the moment it stops being a hobby then it's not fun for him because he's like i have another job i'm not quitting for like i'm not leaving that behind so it's just like okay that's just what it's gonna be yeah he, he his videos definitely are like i did this thing i don't want to write a paper about it so i'm just gonna talk about you know what i did on camera kind of and and dissect what i did and show you what i would I say that what he also does though because in the same video he talked about how he i think just he's he's interested in just audio and video too but like not to the extent that we want to you know edit everything you know meticulously but he still puts money back in to get better mics to to film things better but like taking it to the obsessive level of you know thinking about every minute detail he's like yeah hey, you know i want to focus on the project itself and the moment you do that then like you said the harder part's putting the video together it's funny because doing like like building stuff is is I don't want to say it's easy, but it's sort of more enjoyable. It, well, I guess it depends. It's like if you feel like you know the path to accomplish your goal, it's enjoyable. But like these rubber stamps, like I can make like I think two of these mm. a day. So like I printed this mold last night, and I'm you know going to test to see how this one came out. Which is I'm taking it's a it's an image. It's a black and white image in Photoshop. I'm literally photoshopping like a depth map, mm. and then I'm putting that into an uh, an PNG to STL converter, and then it's just giving me an STL that I print out. Um, and so it's like for something like Ben does, I can see this like very long turnaround where it's like, okay, I'm going to try this. And then he has to like set something up and in the morning he comes back or he has to order something new and then, you know, wait a few days for it to show up before he can like progress along his, his process. So I can definitely see, you know, I mean, his videos don't come out super frequently, which is probably why. That's how some of my videos are too. Like I've, I have some that I'm working on now where it takes like four or five days to see if the thing you like your new idea worked. Then when it doesn't, you have to just right. restart and there's another five day cycle. And printing is like that too. Like it takes yeah. forever to print I, shit. Like how do you, how do you yeah. navigate videos <laughs> where you have to print something and it goes wrong and then you have to wait? Like, like Ivan Miranda, you see he's printing these like multi days. That's stuff. what I was wondering <laughs> too. Know? Yeah, uh, I have a more struder for that 0.9 <laughs> millimeter layer heights, baby. Ella, Ella no just resolution. ranks it to maximum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what, like, what, what's the worst sort of like delay you've had trying to do an experiment because, because of the turnaround time for printing stuff? I try to keep my prints short mm. because I'm just impatient. I can't wait for a print for like, like 48 hours and things like yeah. that. So I, I keep it small and simple. I don't really know how Ivan is, is able to 
build all of his stuff. He has a huge print farm and he just has the, the process mm. so much dialed in, but it's, it's crazy. The thing is, and, and this is one of the really interesting developments, especially this year, is that 3D printing got way faster than it used to be. There's some new machines on the market that are just two or three times the, the speed than in the past. And it just helps me so much when I'm wow. iterating my mm. designs. How, how does it do that? Is it just literally like a faster head speed? Or it, like... it's, fa it's faster head speed. So there, <laughs> last year there was a really huge thing, at, at least, for, well, I'm, I'm speaking from my 3D printing perspective. So yeah. uh, 3D printing was, was often limited by just the amount of energy you could put into the filament mm. to, to, to melt it up because not like the heater on the outside is the limiting element. It's the heat conductivity mm. of, of mm. the material. If you're printing mm. fast, the core of your material is, is mm. still hard. Um, and the outside it's, it almost already starts to, de to degenerate. Huh. So with like new nozzle designs and just ways to get more heat quickly into the filament, that already helped to boost printing speeds theoretically quite a bit. And this year, some new accessible machines came out that are just moving their print heads so much faster due to yeah. uh, new algorithms. Better tuning. Better tuning. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like extreme oh. fan, fan cooling too. You know, it sounds like extreme a leaf blower going yeah, off. Exactly. Of the yeah, Alan, your, your exactly. thing doesn't look too uh, as cool now, does it? Oh yeah, the more, I mean the more Struder is already out of date technology. I couldn't even you can't even buy it in the stores. I had to get it off of like Craigslist or something. Because they you, don't they don't sell them anymore. Yeah. I remember the video you did where it's like the nozzle has like it like cuts the filament into like third like into three yeah. chunks. Oh yeah, I so. saw that and I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> Kevin, what's going on here? And that's working yeah. so well. That's really working so well. And and these are the things I'm really exciting excited just just talking about because these are the things that I think get the technology to to the next level because additive manufacturing it it's not at the point anymore where you're just printing out toys mm. and stuff. You can use it for for your projects and and you want to mm -hmm. iterate fast and the faster you can print the better because um then you can get this a better product in the end because you have the time to iterate three times instead of just once mm -hmm. so yeah i have uh, i i so i've only ever like really machine cnc machined something on a mill like once and it was this mold that i made and uh it was like 15 hours of machining on on jake laser's machine for a video that i've <laughs> should have been posted yeah, last he, year. Yeah, you're still the one who's ago. used his mill the most out of anyone. Yes. Jake Lee's <laughs> I'm the one who, I am the one who told him he wasn't tightening his tools at all. <laughs> uh, I was like, this can't be right. Is there, like, how do you tighten these? Like, um, and guess what I did first? 3D, 3D printed. printed it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I like, you know, like, I, it's always 3D printing. Like, 3D printing is mm -hmm. always the answer. Like, I, I think that it's probably been one of the most like I don't say revolutionary, but like kind of manufacturing techniques because it's cheap. It's so cheap mm -hmm. and it's so strong for how cheap it is. And it's so fast and it requires so little overhead. Like I, it's amazing. Like what, I, what do you, what do you think is like the next step in, in printing? Cause there's, there's one printer I'm looking at right now that I don't think it's like the future of printing technology, but I think it's really cool because of how portable it is. So I, I think there is still a ton possible in just polymer development, just getting materials that are able to be printed and that are as strong almost as aluminum parts and things like that and are heat resistant. So you can save yourself from really like manufacturing or machining stuff out of, out of aluminum and, and just 3D printing mm. them out. Of course, many talk about metal additive manufacturing and this is what I do at my normal job, but this stuff is still so expensive and so much less accessible that I don't think that anyone will have a metal 3D printer at home in five mm. or 10 years. I don't think you I, need it. I think metal is overrated. Most of, most of the time you, you really don't. Um, so you just need machines that are easy to use. You need materials that are strong mm. and processes that are reliable. And of course, if you want to use it in like real production parts, you need to have ways of doing uh, quality control and things like that. 
So, so what are you looking forward to in the like the home printing, like the sort of accessible printing space? Like, is it? Do you think that the next thing is going to be? Because I mean, obviously, there's like to me, there's there's one thing that's really hard, and I guess with printing, it's kind of two things. Like, everyone's like, oh, you've got this 3D printer, right? You've built this machine. That's all you need. It's like, no, it's software. It's software and material science. Yeah. And I think that it seems that the software has gotten pretty like pretty damn good the past like five years like from when i had my first printer in like 2012 like a maker from like a wooden prusa (laughs) to what i have now like it is two orders of magnitude you used to be anti 3d printer i remember you used to be like strictly really printed parts because it would take me six tries to get a print yeah and i'd have to scrape it off the bed i'd have to like fuddle with the z adjustment guess what this piece of shit wood printer would expand when it heated up and so i would have to like i'd have to get it heated up for like an hour and start (laughs) printing otherwise it would it would like oh it was so frustrating and i hated it i hated it i hated it i hated it um and the software has gotten so good. Like the printer designs have gotten mm-hmm. probably marginally better. Like they're just made out of better materials and we've done mass manufacturing so you can get them at reasonable prices. Um, like I paid the same for my Prusa as I did the maker farm and the maker farm was an absolute piece of dog water. Uh, so what are you kind of looking forward to? Are you looking forward to software? Are you looking forward to mechanical stuff? Are you looking forward to, um, you know, materials like, uh, like filaments because, you know, for a while, 3D printing was oh, like a new, like a Delta or a this or a that. But it kind of now things seem to have mechanically settled mm. mostly. Yeah. And, and th- that's what I want to say. I think the hardware is at the point where it's already really good. But we need to invest more in software to, to get more out of the hardware that we're having. And this is the thing with the conical slicing method or just making things easier to use. I want to give a 3d printer to my dad or even to my mom and just say, uh, yeah, print something, ha- have a spare part. And this is maybe some of the, th- one of the things I'm, I would like to look forward. It doesn't really have to do anything with like 3d printing directly, but maybe some companies jumping on the bandwagon and just making designs of parts of their products that often mm. break mm. more easier yeah. accessible. So that you don't huge. have to rely on, on someone at, on, on a thingiverse to design something. So yeah. like two days ago, I, I ripped apart from my Ikea shelf and instead of like driving to Ikea, purchasing a new one or getting one shipped, uh, just someone on mm. thingiverse yes. designed it. I printed it out and it, it's fine. One uh, one of the really popular videos that that I have is I had a, a salad spinner to dry off your lettuce leaves. Oh, and really? A salad that, tossing that, machine. Yeah, the the salad drying. We have machine. one of those in a box <laughs> right now. So, and this thing was notorious for the gears breaking in it, and it's a fifty bucks. It's a fifty bucks product that you're you mm-hmm. that you're buying and then just a 10 mm-hmm. cent injection molded part just breaks mm-hmm. and i took it out of it um redesigned it printed it out and it has been working well for the last four years now it's probably working even better than before <laughs> probably even better yeah um and this is something i would really like to see more and more but of of course companies don't really have the incentive to do that because mm. how are they in the end like how can they make sure that, that you are using like the right material, the right, right process and things like that, that the mm-hmm. product in the end works as it's intended? So, yeah, it still takes quite a bit of skill to actually yeah. 3D print something because you have to keep mm-hmm. like material in mind, orientation mm-hmm. in mind. If you have to like actually design something, then you got to like have like keep in mind sort of like what your tolerances mm-hmm. are and like, like, yeah, there's still like I, a lot. I don't think people expect too much though. Well, some, some do. But um, some also just think that it's a, a 3D printer is something for printing toys and figurines and things like that. But it can do more mm. if you properly I, use it. But you need to know how to properly use it. Well, I'm talking about more like if IKEA had a file for that little part of yours that broke yeah. and you could just print it out, you know, like. It's probably liability. It's liability. So I guess my question well, would be. I mean, that would kind of go around that to a certain degree. I think because I think here probably I'm one of the worst or least knowledgeable about 3D modeling and stuff. Um, 
No, don't say Tinkercad. That. I think Tinkercad gang, rise for, up. Like, and I, I think 3D printing is really cool. And every time I make something, I'm pretty excited that you know, I made something on it, and now it exists. I am God. Um, but I think the the biggest hurdle Screaming for me, Nigel. and it's like will help me with this was, for example, I had a vacuum pump, and there's just this plastic part. The company doesn't even sell. I had one of them, and I just needed to copy it. Like I had the piece fully intact. But I'm like, I don't know how to model this at all. And so Will ended up basically doing it for me. Um, but it's like, I think that it's that's the hardest part like, is screw it. when I have to think about, it's like, oh, to model it. Oh, I have to get fusion or something. Or, and then I look at it and I just don't understand what half the buttons are doing. And then you just rage quit. <laughs> yeah. um, having, if someone. <laughs> now you know how, what it's like being in an airplane and the pilot dies. <laughs> if someone could come up with some <laughs> software that was, I mean, people are doing it with like, you know, scanning with the phone and stuff, but. I think that would be for me one of the biggest things where it's like either some insanely intuitive like for program for people who just want to do basic little like yeah. copy something they have or design something simple yeah. or to be able to copy something that they already have and they just want a second part of without having to learn yeah, yeah like fusion or something else that's incredibly yeah. complicated. I'm still going to pitch Tinkercad. I still use Tinkercad. It's shameful, but it gets the job done. Well, I mean, just whatever good works. Enough. Yeah. Well, this is sometimes where yeah. McMaster Car is so nice because they have cat models mm, of yes. all yeah. of their products, and sometimes you <laughs> yeah. you, you just find I've, the perfect part. Don't have to design; you just print it all. I've printed yeah. stuff you should never, ever, <laughs> ever three D print from McMaster see, Car. Stainless like, steel like, part like, with threads printing. on yeah, it, and it I actually did a, threaded like a, in. Uh, like a brass nipple, you know, like a threaded pipe fitting that has like a the brass nipple on it for. Putting a, like a bar, like a hose barb. That's okay. It depends what you're <laughs> like doing. A, like a, you know, I, well, I mean, you definitely shouldn't do that, but it worked. It was low pressure. Yes, I'm saying it all depends what you're doing. That's what I was really impressed with the Prusa was the fact that you could just do that and it just fit. So I made these little mm. fingers for my calipers so I yeah. could measure like in inside dimensions. So I was like trying to find someone who had done oh. this and I couldn't find the model. And so you can now measure stuff like... You know, like like a oh, there's tea in the mug still. You can like measure the inside of the mug more oh, accurately. I like see. Like if there's yes. an, like something where the jaws would get stuck yeah. on it. That's interesting. That's cool. So it was like you know like like maybe 20 minutes to make the first design to try to figure out how it would fit together, and then I just printed it and then went through like two iterations, and then I got something that fit pretty nice, and they fit on my other calipers too that are a different brand. So I printed two of them out and I just stuck them in the caliper case. This just reminded me of something that I saw like because of Will when I went to your place in 2019. I think this was one of my first exposures to 3D printing being like super just useful if you know how to use it because you had that vending machine. But it wouldn't mm. vend Red Bulls because the, the thing wasn't yep. big enough. The cups were yeah, too big. Yeah, so you just went and you were just like, oh, and like 20 minutes later you came, you're like, oh, it's printing. Then you came back with like just a thing that would hold a Red Bull can instead of a Coke can. And then it just, you did it within like a few hours because your party was, you know, later that evening. Yeah, like that And you day. just wanted people to be able to like <laughs> click the button and get Red Bulls. And to me, that was like one of the most practical things where it's like there was a problem and you just solved it within like not like uh, it was yeah. 30 minutes and then it was printing like yeah and then hours, it was yeah. it was a funny thing and everyone liked it when they could get red bulls later that day <laughs> yeah it, it was red bulls and beer exactly <laughs> but to me that was that with, without 3d printing you just couldn't do that that just was not and it's not like you know you're not changing the world with that but i feel like that's what's kind of cool is there's just a small little problem and you're able to fix it by just you know like make the yeah go away like I can't, I can't buy a firearm legally, so I made the 3D printer. <laughs> then I blew my hand off. <laughs> I really want to do. I mean, you you've seen like all those news articles where people they do um, like the gun buyback programs, and someone just like prints oh, yeah. ten guns and and essentially sells them for money. Genius. Like I'd love to do yeah. something like that. So you think you think like models is like like accessible models? Accessible models. Um, like, what do you think is the shortcoming? Is it like the library is not big enough? Is it that there's just a lot of crap? There is a lot of good stuff, but you you often have for for one problem like five designs and finding the one that that works the best. Uh, so having something like that directly provided from like the manufacturer, hmm. even maybe especially designed for additive manufacturing that you don't need any supports and things like that, which is possible if the designer knows hmm. what he's doing. 
I think this would be just like a, a really nice step forward into using products longer, sustainability mm. and things like yeah. that. Um, and since nowadays, of course, not everyone has a printer, but you always know somebody who does that. And you can just, if, if you would have the possibility just to just ask him, yeah, a knob of my Bosch dishwasher broke. Yeah. Can you just print that out? Because there is the CAD file from Bosch. Mm with a bit of documentation what material you should use and things like that so i yeah, think that, would that really should nice. matter right like you know if you mm -hmm. are gonna replace a, a handle on your dishwasher like it's not a flight yeah i was gonna part, say so it also cares. depends on the part because even like the little thing that you designed for me it's like the worst case of my thing just kind of falls off it's like yeah. no one's gonna die because <laughs> the print wasn't yeah. good like they sell cars and you're supposed to change your oil and it's like they let people change their yeah. own oil right and it's like well that goes i mean like half the time people don't even change their oil <laughs> and their car explodes like like that's that's sort of the consumer's yeah. fault not the well, you just have a disclaimer fault, but i guess part. yeah or i guess like a release of mm. liability of like this is mm. a you know maybe the terminology is it's a not a replacement part it's like a test fit part to see if mm. like it would work that way it's like some sort of the companies uh, want to make money they want you to buy yeah. a dishwasher or even if they make money so. on the parts because again the piece that you made for me will i'm pretty sure at some point when yeah. they did sell it they wanted like 200 dollars for it but it's like you designed uh, yeah. it in 30 minutes and what printed it with you know 42 cents worth of plastic yeah no less even. <laughs> eight it's cents worth of plastic yeah. so it's they want to make their money on parts too so some companies definitely would just not adopt that yeah, I think that's just the unfortunate reality is they're more interested. Like, like, well, automotive manufacturers have to, like, build – they have to make replacement equipment for a while. Like, is that a profitable thing or is it, like, a government thing where they have to do it? Or maybe they have to do it even if it is unprofitable. Because um, I remember trying – I had to, like, replace, you know, some fittings on my car, some tubes on my car because I had to pass the government inspection here. And uh, they're like, oh, no, there can't be any, like, silicon. Like, you can't – there can't be, like, an adhesive. And the previous mm. owner had done some weird shit. Um, an alcoholic old man who put a bunch of dents in the car. But uh, long story short, I went to the auto parts store and just went to the shelf and just spent like 20 minutes trying to find a bunch of stuff to like get from <laughs> here to here <laughs> instead of buying the $200, you know, original manufacturer mm -hmm. part. Like it, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. I want to ask, I want to ask about this, this one printer. It's called, I don't, I mean, you're going to know what it is cause you're a, a printing nerd. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is called Will is Will is the equivalent of the detergent guy right now with <laughs> yeah. the printers. Uh, which detergent tastes the best? <laughs> Positron. <laughs> How do you feel about the Positron? This machine is so nice. I really want to build one. I've never I... heard of it before. Is it the what folding it? guy? That's yes. that's the folding guy, the upside down printer. It's mm -hmm. so nicely yeah. designed. I, I canceled my Patreon support for Simone and Peter and started giving this guy 20 bucks a month. Because there's no possibility oh, you could have so just well added deserved. to the... Yeah. I... The really unfortunate thing about that machine is that it has some, some custom machine parts, and yes. if you don't have them, it's hard to build. I was very, very much like, if I had more free time... I 100% would want to spend time on trying to fix that because there's a lot of stuff on this printer where you can see like this guy's done a really good job, but he's done he has like such a big like mountain of work to do that I can see it being not worth his time or energy to try to fix certain parts of it because uh, there's some parts of it I look at and I'm like mm, this is kind of shitty and I think that somebody who was just focused on fixing that mm -hmm. one thing. Yeah. could make it go away um and so it, it feels like you know this guy has essentially done a, a project that would have taken a team of like you know 10 people a year to do and he's done it by himself uh and it's really cool and and like if you guys you know anyone listening watching doesn't know what this is it is a printer a 3d printer an fdm printer where the creator had the goal of fitting it into a filament box <laughs> so it prints upside down, which allows it to be constructed in a way where there's a large base and a mast that comes up with the uh, the heated bed. And so the, the mast and the heated bed essentially can lie flat and when it's packed up and disassembled. And then when you want to put it together to print, you take it out of the box, you 
assemble the mast vertically. You just like bolt the mast on and stick the heated bed on it. And you can now print a part that's like, what, 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters. Like it's like a full blown wow. print volume. Um, so imagine being able to fit something in your backpack and fit every, like you could fit the, the printer and some filament and your computer all in a backpack. Yeah, but like, when would you ever need that? Dude, when we went to do the Mr. Beast video, we like we asked Prusa to send us a printer. <laughs> they also have was... like four printers, though. Yeah, but I I didn't want to have to deal with you know yeah. mismanaged printers because I mean th- their printers were in okay condition, but you just never know. Like imagine showing up to a place and not knowing if their printers are like operational or taken apart or just in bad condition. Like mm-hmm. like having a like a printer like this is such a cool idea. But I think this is one of the cool things about that printer also being being open source that people have the possibility to improve certain things and make it better um and i know by a fact that they're releasing like a kit version of that at the beginning of next year and i so want to have one because it's Mm -hmm. such a unique design it's not it's not super fast it's probably not the super best quality but it just looks (laughs) different and so nice so I remember going to Maker Fairs back in the day before they died. Well, they didn't yeah. die, but they... <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of dead. Pretty Is dead. Is grandma dead or is she just not here? In I a don't coffin. Know. Make... Yeah. Um, Maker Fair still exists, but uh, that was like the thing was like 3D printers. It was like, what are the, what's the new weird shit someone's done? And I think kind of at the tail end of it, it was just big. <laughs> but we've made a big printer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, what the hell am I going to do? Wait three days for a part to, like, no, that's stupid. Um, you remember when we were talking about ShitCAD? Yeah. <laughs> that idea? Yeah, somebody on the Discord, I can't, I've been looking for the past 15 minutes. Somebody made a demo but it's with a gun. It's like a, a cube, and they just shoot at the cube to remove material. And they made a demo, and they posted it, and I can't find it. I think it. I saw that. I don't think you can export it as an STL, though, which is uh, one of the high requirements for ShipCAD. It's true. To... STL only. Okay, I'm glad you, I'm glad you think that the, uh, the Positron is, is cool, because this is sort of one of the most unique developments I've seen in 3D printing, and it has nothing to do with making mm-hmm. the print quality better or faster, but portability, which nobody has focused on at all. Mm-hmm. Like, no one's ever focused on portability. And this is the first nobody one I've needs seen. it. It's like a one in a million. No, this is Kevin 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 Kevin. Kevin. nobody it's needs it. I Can you imagine it's... being in the middle of like, you like go somewhere to do something and you need like, oh shit, I need to like, I like made this part wrong. Like, what like, the? Look at Bye, that. like imagine you're, you're on set and your camera keeps dying and you can create <laughs> like, a new motherboard for <laughs> it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming on. Yeah, thank Stephane. you so much for having me. It, it honestly is a big honor f- for me being here. <laughs> Would you rather get a streamy, a cummy, or uh, be a guest on the Safety Third podcast? I want to have Heimlich, the caterpillar. Oh, you are. Right. <laughs> so you're doing it. Caterpillar. We're doing want, it. I'm... Uh, of course I want to have a cummy. <laughs> Okay, because, we're, you know what? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to... I, I'm you go on Fiverr now and, and ask gonna someone a, we're to gonna design make, a cummy. You're going to mass yes, produce we're them? Gonna make this goddamn I'm going to make this. We're, <laughs> we're going to do this. Safety third. We're going to do it. We're going to make the cummies. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's going to be expensive and it's going to it's gonna lose money and we're gonna have we're gonna enjoy every step of the way and we know that mark rober is gonna win <laughs> mark rober everyone's gonna win they're gonna they don't want to win but they're gonna win <laughs> thank you so much for uh for being a guest um cnc kitchen if you have any interest in in making stuff 3d printing i i you know, if you listen to this podcast <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> <laughs> you would do that, um, and you don't already know of um, Stefan's channel. Go look at it; you're gonna enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. It's it will all kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. The names are gonna fly across the screen. Alan, pick one and eat it. Um, actually, no. I don't think we can. I don't think we can pay that. <laughs> Uh, I I feel like I ne- whenever I do this stuff I feel like it never actually does anything. Yeah, it just sort of it's it's a lot of names. It's easier just to make them float by. <laughs> uh, I think we restocked the shirts. We sold out of the dumpster fire t-shirts. Actually, we could send. Do you want a dumpster fire t-shirt? Oh yes, they're so nice. Okay, let me. Can send, I also have a uh, pin? 
Do you want a, a walrus shirt, Stefan? Yeah. That is definitely not a resemblance oh, of any person living or non-living. We also have stickers. <laughs> that one's on my laptop. <laughs> so I was, I I only listen to your podcast because I don't really. See, no, that's fair. that's why I'm yes. trying to force everyone and, to. And verbally I explain always it. just heard about the danger hole stickers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Please send me one. Please send me one. I'm gonna come up with a cute version of this too, so I can send you something that's not <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out a lot of people wanted a version of the shirt that they could actually wear in a school. <laughs> <laughs> shocking, shocking. Okay. Uh, now I'm the, I did well though. A lot of people bought the shirt. Even even you sold way that's more of those than I thought you were going to. I'm yeah. so glad that people yeah. have good taste. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if you want to support us, Safety Third has a, a private Discord server. You go on Patreon, and then it automatically will connect your Discord. I think I don't know exactly how that works. I don't know if you need the same same email or you whatever. Um, we're thinking of Discord just launched a support, like a fan. Oh, it's thing? it's almost like a Patreon thing. Patreon competitor. So I'm thinking maybe we try to figure out how to switch to that. I don't know because mm. I. Patreon is kind of poo poo, mm. and our main yeah. our main benefit is uh, you get Discord. to you get to hang out on the Discord, and then all we need is just you know to send stuff to people. But other than that, like I don't know, I don't know, good idea. Yeah. The the extra is when everyone is in town, we're gonna see what's in the box. We're gonna open the, the Heimlich <laughs> flashlight made by General Hugo. General. Ugo, you go. I, yeah, the, I'm not the, sure how the to The legendary say it. Patreon supporter for Safety Third who f kept his word. He <laughs> he said something and he committed to it and he did it. It was unbelievable. A completely unusual experience for all of us. Yeah, I, this is it's it's legendary. It's like imagine if someone like offered to make a recreation of a Stradivarius, like detail <laughs> for detail, down to the. Movie. I don't know what that is, but you should definitely. <laughs> it's a very a fancy kind of box. <laughs> A caterpillar flashlight from a bug's life. God! <laughs> Kevin, Bye, your Kevin. shit's all messed up. <laughs>